If you're a modern home or going to be a modern person in a modern home, you're going to have a couple of electrical devices. You're going to have an electric car, which means you'll have an electric car charger. You'll likely have solar panels. You'll likely have a battery or storage system for your house to store that solar energy or even just a battery system on its own. And you might have a heat pump or maybe an air conditioning, air to air system, which is keeping your house cool. And all you want to happen is for all these things to cost you as least amount of money as possible while preserving the best amount of comfort or range left in your electric car. And you want all these devices to be smart and talk to each other, which they don't. Well, this video, I'm going to tell you about a project, which means that all these devices that are connected to the grid will save you as much money as possible and talk to each other like they're all friends. Everyone is getting bogged down about smart bulbs and smart thermostats and all this smart home devices talking to each other in your smart home. But smart bulbs and smart devices are just basically on what we call Zigbee or Matter. Now, they are devices that don't really matter. The devices that really matter for a true smart home, in my opinion, are devices like your battery, your, your EV charger, your solar connected devices. These are the real smart home devices. These are the smart tech that a smart person has in their home. Yes, you might have the bulbs and stuff like that, but you don't really want to be fiddling around with second-hand uh, party apps like Home Assistant. Most people just want to buy the devices and know that they're going to work. There's hundreds and hundreds of different batteries, inverters, car chargers all around the world, not just here in the UK, and we just want them to all communicate in the same language to talk to each other so that way our electric car doesn't get flat, our home stays nice and cosy, and with all these devices working, that's what's going to happen with a new project called Mercury. Now, if you want to learn more about Mercury, this video will be going into some little details about Mercury, but soon you'll see this octopus and that octopus up there will change slightly for the octopus Kraken octopus, because in a couple of weeks, I'll be going to the Octopus Kraken Development Office, where Project Mercury will be opening its doors to not only just EV companies, charging companies, battery companies, all these other companies, but other utilities. And the plan is to get Project Mercury off the ground as a new smart home tech. Now that video will be coming soon. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure you click subscribe, click that notification bell, because as soon as that video is made, it's probably going to contain a lot more answers to what Project Mercury will actually mean and what Project Mercury will actually be doing. So what is Project Mercury? Well, in the simplest terms possible, Greg Jackson, the CEO of Octopus Energy, explained that when we had early days, I mean, some of you might not remember, depending on how old you are, but most of us do who are my age, when we first had the first wireless headsets for cars or even wireless car systems where they talk to our phones, they didn't really work. There was, you could buy a different phone or a different hands-free kit and they just wouldn't work with every single phone or every single car. It was a nightmare. Then along came a standard called Bluetooth. Bluetooth, we still use today, and it means they all talk the same language. You can get the uh, different car, different phones, and they all talk absolutely perfectly to each other. That standard was Bluetooth. Now, what Octopus want to do is create a standard for virtual power plants. So anything that's grid connected can talk the same language to each other to react to grid signals, which we'll be talking about in this video. Now, currently, Octopus Kraken is one of the largest in the world, virtual power plants. They control one gigawatt of electricity demand. And that means that that flexibility across 200,000 devices gives it this huge virtual power plant of power they can switch on and off on their demand based on power signals. And as we move towards a greener, sustainable future, turning off coal plants and turning on more wind and solar, we need a grid that's flexible to not only shed off demand, turn demand off, but also turn it on very quickly if there's an oversupply of wind or solar energy. This huge virtual power plant will mean better pricing for people who take advantage of it. And Octopus know more about virtual power plants than any other energy company in the world due to the way they built their billing system and their technology system, Kraken, that sits behind it. In fact, so much so that lots of other utilities around the world and even in the UK have bought Kraken from Octopus. In fact, it's probably one of their most profitable sides of the business, even more than Octopus Energy themselves, is selling the Kraken system to other energy firms to use. This allows them the huge 
huge virtual power plant potential, which is why they've asked other energy companies, other uh, makers of battery battery EV chargers, other makers of anything grid connected to join Project Mercury so we can all work together to build a more substantial, more connected grid system so it can react to being a greener future for everybody. Let's give you an example of what Project Mercury can do. It's 6 a.m. in the morning, there is a huge supply of wind, it's very, very, very sunny at 6 a.m., which is not typical, and demand is extremely low. That means there's not not many people up, not many people doing anything, but we've got this huge surplus of wind energy. What do we do? Do we turn off these turbines? Well, that's what we do at the moment, but with Project Mercury, and this is what Octopus are already doing on their Kraken system, is they see this available wind and they turn on all the EV charges that are connected and plugged into EVs, and they suck all this extra energy out of the grid. Not only do they do that, but they also can turn on heat pumps and other connected devices that can pull power out of the grid. For example, you've got a battery that's absolutely empty, a grid store battery, they can turn that on. Turning all these devices on means that instead of turning these turbines off when wind is being generated, we can suck that power out of the grid, keep these wind turbines turning, and because green power like wind is so cheap, sometimes when there's an oversupply of power like this, Prices can go negative, so you can be paid for it, or it can hit zero or even very, very low pence figures. So because of this low, cheap grid, Octopus can basically offer cheaper electricity to, to customers, and they're already doing this, but with Kraken, we get this extra flexibility demand. Now, we have the reverse problem now, which is coming into 9 a.m., and the wind has stopped, and it's gone very cloudy, but everyone's waking up and everyone is doing something. And there's maybe a huge national event where everyone's turning on kettles, TVs, and everything's being used all at the same time for something major. Maybe it's Christmas Day, and they predicted that everyone's gonna get up at 9 a.m., turn their oven on, start cooking the turkeys, having a shower, um, and electricity demand is going to suddenly become very, very scarce. So what does Mercury do? So because we already knew that this 9am event was coming and we just had 6am, we've just charged all these home storage batteries to 100%, your EV's already charged to 100% and your house is slightly overheated with your air conditioning or your heat pump system. So everything is warm, everything is set, everything is full. So we just say at 9am, stop heating the house with the air conditioning, turn off the heat pump and maybe discharge a little bit of that full home storage battery back to the grid. And in fact, this could even get more interesting because with electric cars going to vehicle to grid, vehicle to load systems, vehicle to home systems, we could actually say to the electric car, hey, you actually didn't need 100% for your journey this week. You only needed 80%. How about we just send 10% of this energy back to the national grid? And why would you choose to send your home storage battery and your car battery back to the national grid? Well, EVs, home storage batteries, are going to be the new passive income of the future because you're going to be paid for your flexibility. You're going to be paid for when you can soak that energy in by getting cheap, free, or even negative electricity for your home storage battery in your EV. One form of passive income would be getting paid to charge your EV up. It will happen, it already does happen in some cases. And the other one is sending that power back to the grid for an extremely high export reward for when the grid needs it, if the grid needs it, they're going to pay you a lot more money for that demand flexibility at the times they need it. So having that flexibility in your EV battery to go back, your home storage battery to go back, and also be able to soak it back when it's cheap, you can benefit from not only the input, but also an extremely good export. This passive income is going to be the new future for a lot of people because if you haven't got an EV or home storage battery yet, wait until this starts happening. And Project Mercury means it is already on the plans, on the cards to happen now. So why do we need Project Mercury? Well, if these devices don't all talk to each other, we could have the problem where the national grid or the Mercury system sends out a device or Octopus, any energy company sends out a device to your EV charger to say, hey, there's loads of available wind today at 9 a.m., 8 a.m., whatever the time is outside your normal cheap window, and they're gonna start charging your electric car battery because the energy is cheap or free or discounted. That EV charger turns on, 
great, you're getting that cheap power. But if you've got a home storage battery and that doesn't know about this event, your home storage battery might have been charged overnight during your typical cheap rate tariff, and it's now being discharged into your home, into your into your car battery. Now there is ways around it, like I mentioned before, with Home Assistant, but not everyone can use Home Assistant. Not everyone's got these smart av available things. And to be honest, why should you have to get a third party system for these things to talk? They should just do it natively. And this is the whole idea behind Mercury, to stop that electric car taking the, the charge straight out of your home battery and talk intelligently to make sure it knows when to charge cheap and when not to discharge into another device. For example, there might be an, an event where it's really cheap electricity and we want to turn everything on outside a normal window like your heat pump and the air conditioning system. We don't want the battery to start supplying the rest of it we want the battery to stay for when we even need it to export back to the grid for more money or just to power the house because we don't want to import anything from the grid at that time now kraken octopus and mercury do ha have a lot of questions i have a lot of questions about it and one of the questions i have is are they really going to open it up to all utilities are they really going to open it up to all companies or will it just be utilities that agree to buy Kraken as a platform? Is it going to be a free system, but with a garden wall where you have to be part of the Octopus Kraken billing system? Or will they truly say this is an open platform? Also, is it gonna be cloud-based or is it gonna be locally based? Is it gonna have a, a local network connection where if all the devices in the house are Mercury enabled and only one of them gets the signal to turn on, will it tell the rest of the devices locally what they're gonna do? Or is it all gonna be based purely in the cloud? And the plan is to have one app. Will that mean the Octopus Energy app? Or will other utilities be able to access a different app for themselves, create their own app that talks directly to Mercury? All these questions I have, I hope to get them answered in Manchester when I go. So make sure you click subscribe that notification bell. And if you're wondering about how to get paid for export energy more than you already do, then maybe check out this video soon because this is going to be happening again this year.